as a part of the European Week of Regions and Cities, the Meet Norway European Office has organized this webinar to explore how thinking digitally can help empower minority language users in their everyday life. We have an ambition to target a broad European audience. So it is a pleasure having participants from Italy, Germany, Bulgaria, England, Latvia, the Netherlands, Denmark and Scotland, in addition to a member of the European Parliament from the European Commission, the European Association of Development Agency and the OECD, to mention a few. But welcome to all of you. My name is Heide Fosslan and I am the director of the Mid-Norway European Office. You may wonder why we address today's topic. South Sami is a minority language in Min Norway. It is the southwest than most of the Sami languages. It is discussed how many speakers there are, but the numbers differ from a total of 500 up to 2,000 people in Norway and Sweden together. In the UNESCO list of endangered languages, the South Sami language is classified as a seriously endangered language. Today, there are, as mentioned, few users, and they live, live partly separated over large geographical distances. This makes it demanding con to conduct South Sami language work linked to fostering the transmission of the language. Our society has a great need for people with the competence in South Sami, especially within the teaching profession, the development of teaching aids and in public administration. However, South Sami is only one out of many European endangered minority languages. This is why we believe in closer European collaboration. This webinar marks of a first step towards putting challenges European minority language speakers face on the European and EU agenda. And to start a discussion on the need for developing a strategy on revitalization of minority languages. A briefing to the European Parliament launched by European Parliamentary Research Service last month, September 2020, states that regional and minority languages together with smaller state languages, the so-called lesser used languages, are under serious threat of extinction. Having this in mind, today's webinar will give you a brief introduction to a threatened way of communicating the South Sami language and the Sami song tradition Yoik. So I am very happy to have with us Maria Mortensen, who is a South Sami speaker, a student of South Sami at Noor University, as well as a well-established musician where she uses South Sami language in her Yoik. I am also very pleased to have Professor Frude Fjellheim with us. Frude is a professor in the Sami Yoik tradition at Noor University. He is also a famous artist and has, among other things, composed music inspired by Yoik to two popular Disney movies, namely the Frozen movies. Having the South Sami language and the Yoik as a starting point, we will during this webinar explore what the use of, for example, digital tools for dissemination of minority languages can bring. We are very happy and pleased also to have Guillaume Jagle with us. He is a national expert in DG education and culture to the European Commission and he will present the EU's strategy for strengthening multilingualism and supporting digital tools for education. The following dialogue during today's webinar will build on an Erasmus Plus proposal. The objective 
of the intended project is to innovate in teaching methods and language building for and about threatened languages. This will be explored by contextualizing them with a big picture of language diversity in Europe and by providing stakeholders with practical tools to help them foster the transmission of the language. From this collaboration, I am happy to present Kur van der Meer, who is project manager of the Friske Academy and head of the Mer Mercator European Research Center for Multilingualism and Language Training in the Netherlands. Sanita Lastina, who is a professor in applied linguistics at Resekne Academy of Technologies in Latvia. And Associate Professor Aspion Kolberg, who is head of the South Sami Language Department at the Noor University. They will share their perspectives on why European collaboration could be the key to success in developing replicable tools for revitalization of minority languages across Europe. To all of you who follow us in the audience, we invite you to participate, to join the European dialogue about how thinking digitally can help empower minority language users in their everyday life and help keeping threatened languages alive. So please post all your comments and questions in the chat. And I will post your questions and your comments to the speakers who will answer them at the end of this one hour long webinar. So let's start by inviting Maria and Trude to the screen. Maria and Trude, could you please give the audience an insight into what challenges, but also possibilities, communicating the South Sami way brings, both when it comes to speaking the language as well as communicating through YOIC. The screen is yours. Thank you, Heidi, for the introduction. So um, I want to talk about the importance of telling your story in your own la native language. Um, and language and life lives in symbiosis. Um, so it's important to protect the way of life that keeps minority languages alive. And also, as a I find it a democratic duty to lift minority languages into the technology. So I am a descendant of a strong people surviving the hard politics of the Scandinavian states, with the result of me having to relearn my own native language and music tradition, the Oik. So the South Semi language is a nature language um, and it's closely connected to a sustainable living in nature. I'm born into a reindeer herding family and um, I've chosen to write my music in my mother tongue, even though a very, very few people understand the South Sami language. This language tells my stories the best way. So I find it very important to protect the way of life that keeps minority languages alive, like South Sami and the reindeer herding does for me. And it's also very, very important to be able to tell our own story in our language. Because you find a lot of the traditional knowledge in our rich terminology describing nature, family, the way of living. So language and life lives in symbiosis. And sometimes I do feel that I've been raised in two parallel worlds. Uh, one where I've learned to preserve all the resources one animal can give to survive in nature. And the other where I can travel to all corners of the world, absorbing globalization and digitalization through my musical work. And there's something that really fascinates me that the Sami people have been so good at adapting to the modern world because we still are here maintaining our knowledge of traditional life and including the modern technology 
whether it's snowmobiles or drones outside uh, or having online classes or the Zoom meeting we're at. Um, everywhere we try to use the South Salmon language where it's possible. But in the modern world, we also need areas where we can use our language more and expand these places of using it. So when, when it came to the EU, I thought about the parliament as an example, because they have interpreters that makes it possible through technology to discuss political matters in all different languages. They know the importance of their native language to have an accurate discussion. And here we see that technology already exists, but who gets access and resource, resources to enter the digital world, I think it varies. So I find it a, like a democratic duty to lift minority languages into technology. And um, the UN also have uh, one of the goals that in the sustainable development goals is leave no one behind. So what does it mean for the South Semi language? Um, I think it means that we have to have the possibility to make our own language accessible in all digital platforms, having digital teaching aids, the different courses from South Semi new beginner to expert stage, to have online or digital games, um, to listen to our own language daily in the media, in all these different platforms to have a well-developed spelling program, making it easier to dare to write South Sami in social media, since it's quite a big platform these days. Um, audiobooks, music, and the list goes on. So the technology is an important tool to fulfill the goal to a comprehensive South Sami language education and sustainable living. And also to have equal premises to, for everybody to learn the South Semi language. And we must also have the possibility to connect to the technolo technological development, um, to ourselves si decide how to use it, and not to be left behind on this. And if we look 50 to 100 years back, uh, when the language faded, it became so silent. And um, this silent, we do not need no more. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. It's uh, fantastic to listen to how you express the needs for the, uh, for the fantastic language that the South family language is. My name is Frode Fjellheim and I was raised in a family where the, the, the South Sami language already was almost faded away, so I hadn't, didn't have the chance to, to learn the language. But uh, I've studied the musical tradition of the S South Sami culture, or the, or the Sami culture called Yoik, and it has been a fantastic way for me to uh, have a way of uh, expressing my uh, Sami-ness or the Sami culture that I am a part of. I don't know if maybe not everybody of you know what Yoik is, so maybe a little short demonstration here. <laughs> Minority languages in the digital age, it will be fantastic to have a conversation with other minority languages which is in Europe, and maybe get some ideas on how the yoik can develop and live forever. Okay, that was a small example of the, of the yoik tradition. 
And uh, of course, music uh, is a very important carrier of a culture. Uh, and in the Sami culture, uh, it's very important because the Yoik tradition, which I gave a short example of here, is very unique. It's a very unique vocal expression where you use, as you heard, some words, but also a lot of just sounds, uh, musical uh, syllables with no meaning. And uh, it's a way of expressing uh, you can express feelings. You can uh, you can you can sort of uh, sh tell stories without uh, actually using words. So it's a fantastic uh, tradition, and it's an old uh, tradition. Um, yoik is also a way of uh, remembering thing in your culture. You can remember places. If you are going to describe some special mountain uh, in the nearby, you can use the yoik to sort of tell which, what kind of mountain this is, what the shape of the mountain is. So it's a it's a fantastic tool for expressing things, and you can also uh, use the yoik to actually yoik persons. You can describe a person, uh, and it's uh, it's said that uh, in the Sami culture, every everybody of course have a name, but you can also have a yoik, your own musical sort of name or extension of the name. So, in this way, uh, you can remember your grandmother your relatives or your friends by yoiking them. So it's a very special tradition that is a lot more than music. It's also it's often said that yoik is a musical tradition, but it's much, much more. And uh, I think it's fantastic to keep this tradition alive because it's uh, it keeps so much of the uh, Sami culture within the way it's done. Of course, traditionally the Yoik has, has uh, lived uh, because uh, the elder generations have learned young people to Yoik and the children have always listened to the Yoik and learned Yoik the, uh, yeah, should I say the, the natural <laughs> way or the the old traditional way. But uh, today, uh, children, they grow up in, uh, in a society where they keep a uh, lot of their time in uh, schools, in uh, education. So today, I think it's uh, necessary for if the yoik should survive and develop. So the learning of the yoik some of the learning, at least, maybe should take place in uh, in the institutions, the uh, educational institutions. So um, I have uh, tried to contribute to that b by uh, creating a course at Nord University, Nord University, called uh, "Me Joik som Utgangspunkt," or "Starting with Joik." And uh, I hope this can be one way to sort of uh, let the yoik live uh, further. Um, I would also say that uh, I started to say that I'm not a language speaker. I don't speak South Sami, but but since I've used the yoik. It's a sort of possibility for me and maybe and maybe a lot of other people to to uh, to learn some words in South Sami and have some way of entering the uh, the language by use of the yoik and also the music uh, like Mariad 
does. She she writes lyrics in the South Sami language, and uh, and this could be a fantastic introduction to the language uh, for for a lot of people. So uh, this is a possibility and also a challenge to uh, uh, I I in these days where we we have the we have the course where we physically meet in the institutions but uh, we have also explored some challenges now during this pandemic situation where where you actually have to uh, meet like we do now and uh, of course you can communicate and you can express uh, thoughts and ideas but it's a little bit more difficult than uh, to meet uh, socially. So uh, I hope uh, this webinar maybe can be a start point of uh, uh, getting more knowledge on how we also can communicate and teach things through the digital medias we are exploring now. There's a lot of uh, challenges, uh, especially for music, because there's uh, there's a time delay in the audio and the audio quality is maybe not perfect. So, so maybe this is something that will change and get better and make the possibility for the Yoik to develop uh, further. Yeah. yeah, because a Yoik tradition or, or a culture, a tradition must always develop in order to live. So I hope that that will do and I, uh, Hope this can be the starting point for a fantastic future for the Yoik. Wow, Fuda and Maria, thank you so much for giving us this insight, both to the language, but also to the Yoik tradition and how one communicates when it's come to Southern Sami language. Please stay with us for the Q&A session. There are already coming questions in, I can see. Uh, when you, uh, Gilam, hear Maya and through the speak, what are the tools to strengthen threatened languages and minority languages from your perspective as a national expert in DG education and culture to the European Commission? The screen is yours. Thank you, Heidi. Um, well, today I will present briefly the EU strategy for strengthening multilinguism and, supporting, and the supporting digital tools for education. You will experience that most of it deal with language and multilingualism in general, and not specifically in, uh, with minority languages, but they are mostly integrated. So um, we can notice that the COVID-19 pandemic boost already existing discussion about the use of digital tools in education, as we were for the first time in a situation where there was a little choice but to use digital technology to, prove edu uh, to provide education and training. We have learned from this experience and we have to use it to improve and, uh, our educational system to fit them to the digital age. And the use of digital tools can enhance learning in almost all fields of education. It's a good use of at least of digital tools. And language learning and teaching is no exception. So now I will address a rapid overview of the EU strategy in the context of multilingualism and language learning in education, as well as a short overview of the digital action. Then I will present you the Erasmus program support for implementation of these strategies. So first, a little bit about the um, policy context. Benefits of multilingualism has long been recognized by EU states and member states. Uh, by EU and the member states. To be short, language unit people, make other countries and their culture accessible, strengthens intercultural understanding. The knowledge of foreign language uh, play a vital role for enhancing employability and mobility. And multilingualism also improves the competitiveness of the EU economy. Yet, too many Europeans still leave school without a working language of a, uh, a working knowledge of a second language. And uh, concerned by this fact, the EU has set the improvement of language teaching and learning as a priority. Thus, the European Commission and the, and the national government work together to meet an ambitious goal, 
all young people to learn at least two foreign languages in addition to the language of schooling, and this from an early age. This goal was confirmed in 2017 in the vision for a European education area in which learning, studying, and doing research would not be hampered by border. And it was echoed in the December 2017 European Council con uh, conclusions. Following a Commission proposal, the Council recommendation for a comprehensive approach to the teaching and, language, uh, le and learning of languages was adopted in May 2019. This recommendation gives a renewed boost to language learning in, EU, in the EU. And it was noticed that it includes the recognition, uh, first, the recognition of the value of learning and maintaining any language that is part of a person's individual interests and circumstances. And this encompasses any language, including regional or minority languages that are part of an individual's cultural heritage and languages brought in by migrants from outside Europe. Secondly, it encouraged member states to increase the level of, uh, of ambition of learning of language learning in compulsory school. And it also uh, appealed to identify and promote innovative, inclusive, and multilingual teaching methods using tools and platforms at EU levels. For just two weeks ago, an education package composed, composed of a communication on the European education area and a renewed digital education action plan was presented. These two documents include practical steps toward a more modern education system, where digital technologies have their roles. The first communication sets out a vision to achieve the European education area by 2025. It proposed the development of the European education area along six dimensions, quality education, inclusion and gender equality, green and digital transition, higher education, and geopolit geopolitical dimension. Fostering language learning and multilingualism is reaffirmed in the communication, which also invite member states to further implement the 2019 Council recommendation on comprehensive approach to the teaching and learning languages, included in vocational education and training. The importance of teacher and trainers to achieve this goal is also emphasized in this communication. The communication on the EEA was also accompanied by a communication on the new Digital Education Action Plan. The Digital Education Action Plan is an enabler for the EEA and the new skill agenda. It contains ambitious action addressing two strategic priorities. The first is promoting the development of a European digital education ecosystem. The second is enhancing the digital competencies and skills for the digital transformation. The high performing digital education ecosystem includes relevant elements for this discussion today, such as competent de uh, competence development for teachers and trainers to secure that they are digitally competent, updated teaching and learning practices and new approach to assessment, and development of high quality digital education content and user friendly tools and secured platform that can be used by everyone. So to conclude, Language learning is right at the heart of the delivery of a well-functioning European education area. And the Digital Education Action Plan lists the action to take to support the use of digital tools in this context. Now I will go further to the Erasmus program. The Erasmus program is the main European tools for supporting the implementation of these policies. Language learning and teaching, as well as digitalization, are embedded throughout the current Erasmus Plus pro program. It creates a wide range of opportunities available for projects promoting minority language. We have actually a brochure that uh, is a compendium of different uh, Erasmus Plus projects on the topic of linguistic diversity and with regional and minor and uh, minority languages. So I invite everyone to have a look on this brochure if you're interested to see what possibilities have been used in the Erasmus Plus program. But just to remind you all the opportunity offered by the Erasmus Plus program. There is first and the most known, the mobility part. Participants in mobility can strengthen their language skills by engaging in learning and training activities abroad. During their mobility experience, most of them can benefit from the online linguistic support designed to assist the participants in improving their knowledge of the language in which they will work or study. We have also a second 
option, which is that different organizations and institutions can cooperate through cooperation for innovation and exchange of practices, focusing on language learning or use of digital tools. Finally, the program offers also opportunities such as policy experimentation and large-scale partnerships to develop new strategies for language teaching and learning in multilingual classrooms. I can emphasize today that there are still two calls that are open in response to the education challenges resulting from the COVID-19 crisis. One of them is a call for digital education readiness in the field of school education, vocational education and training, and higher education, with a deadline of the 29th of October. This call aims to enhance online, distance, and blended learning, including supporting teachers and trainers, as well as safeguarding the inclusive nature of digital learning opportunities. This might be interesting if you have a project in, with promotion of minority languages. A new program is in preparation and is due in 2021. It's not adopted yet. But for this program, our ambition, ambition go, goes beyond simply continuing what is in the, currently, in the current program. For example, we would like to, to increase the support of language learning in mo uh, mobility projects for groups that need it the most, for, like in school education and vocational education and training. So that was about their, the possibilities in the Erasmus program. Now I would like to um, strengthen and emphasize that existing platform and digital tools at EU level also support multilinguism nowadays and language learning. The first of them is a school education getaway, which is a platform for schools in Europe. There you can find a lot of information about policies, learning resources, but also MOOC and training opportunities on very different topics related to school education. The SEG has a theme every month, and last month in September, the theme was languages. And there were plenty of articles about learning languages, but also about minority and regional languages. So I would invite you to have a look. It's still available there. The eTwinning platform is also an opportunity. The eTwinning is an online platform that allows school staff to cooperate and work together and develop projects. It can be used uh, for any projects also related to education. So there is possibility to develop projects on minority language on this platform. The Parley platform is similar to the eTwinning for adult education and both as uh, suitable for minority languages. I will finish by mentioning that the European la language label this label is a well-known tool for quality recognition of projects. We plan to scale it up and, uh, by strengthening the link it has with Erasmus Plus program. The tool will aim to enhance the visibility of projects. For the year 2021 and 22, we have reviewed the priorities for projects that can be awarded with the European language label. These three priorities are aligned with some of the crucial challenges that will define the future European education area. Firstly, language learning and digital tools. Secondly, language promoting equity, social cohesion, and active citizenship. And last but not least, professional development of language teacher. There were, uh, for a couple of weeks ago, the European Day of Languages. And it was presented a video of labeled projected, uh, projects that were, uh, was presented there. It would be interesting for you to see what kind of project have been again um, a label of uh, uh, this label of European languages and also see what can be adaptable for minority languages and regional languages. To conclude, multilingualism and language learning are at the heart of a well-functioning European education area. The Erasmus program and its successor already offer means to support the use of digital tools in education and in language learning. Support for digitalization will be reinforced in the coming years. All those instruments developed for any education aspect are suitable for mobility, uh, minority languages. So I would invite you to tr use those opportunities. Um, to finish, uh, if I have one second, um, Heidi, I would like to attire your attention on a public hearing at the European Parliament tomorrow from 9 to 13 
about the Minority Safe Pact Initiative. The Minority Safe Pact Initiative is a European citizen initiative, uh, which, is a, uh, which is a law proposal for safety of national mi uh, minorities and the promotion of cultural and linguistic diversity. So there is a hearing on that tomorrow. For those who don't know, a European uh, citizen initiative is an instrument of direct democracy at the EU level. The uh, the, if a group of citizens make a proposal and get more than 1 million signatures from at least seven member states, then the Commission engage in uh, this proposal and study it. So it's a very uh, interesting growth rate, um, a grassroots, sorry, proposal that I would uh, invite you if you're interested in language, in minority language to follow tomorrow at uh, on the site of the parliament. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Guillaume, especially your introduction to the Digital European Action Plan and the possibilities and opportunities that lies within the Erasmus, um, both this month, but also in the coming year. Uh, and also insight into the EU digital platform. It's very, very interesting. Uh, I also like us to make a note of the fact that we are organizing our webinar just in time for the EU Parliament's discussions tomorrow, which makes it even more important having a member of the European Parliament among us in the audience. So thank you so much. And we will share the link to the European Parliament's discussion tomorrow for all of those that take part in this webinar. Looking at a practical approach to showcase possibilities collaboration across Europe can bring, we have, as mentioned, invited Cor van der Meer, Sanita Lastina and Ospion Kolberg from the Netherlands, Latvia and Norway. So maybe we can start by having a small introduction of yourselves and maybe this can be done by answering the following questions. Why have you decided or dedicated your work hours to minority languages? Why do you find this so important to you? Maybe you can start, Cor. Yes. Yes, um, I was still muted, sorry. Um, well, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting us to, to, to this uh, platform. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk a little bit about our work. For me personally, um, I'm a Frisian. Uh, Frisian is the second language of the Netherlands, but it is a minority language and only spoken in the province of Friesland. Um, I was born there and I speak the language. It's, it's only the second part of my, my uh, um, career, I think, that I got more and more aware of that. Um, and um, that I'm very interested in the language and wanted to work with that. Um, so that is, um, and being in contact with all the others uh, and who are working in the same kind of field is, is a real pleasure and it's very motivating. Um, we are struggling sometimes uh, like all the, the uh, minority languages, but we try to find solutions and that is a very, a very a pleasure to work in this field. So that is my motivation and introduction. Thank you. What about you, Sanita? Hello, good afternoon. Uh, very similar to CORE. Um, I have two identities. My first identity, I am representative of the regional language of Latvia. Uh, it is Latgalian, spoken in the southeast part of Latvia, very close to the border uh, Russia and Belarus. So this is absolutely monolingual, uh, monolingual environment. My grandparents spoke Latgalian, my mom, I speak Latgalian. It's very strong identity. I feel like it is my duty, my job to bring to community this issue. But uh, my second identity, I'm a linguist researcher and I'm very happy to share uh, my experiences, my wishes, dreams, like with CORE and, and our colleagues uh, who work on minority and regional languages. And my big wish is to find digital tools, uh, good approaches, methods, how to work uh, with different languages in one environment. I am, I am re really thinking about coexistence of regional and minority, national and international languages, because our children live in such multilingual 
environment, but I, I'm hoping one day to see good tools, digital, for using good methodologies, how to teach uh, languages using this heteroglossic ideology, not monoglossic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And Asbjörn? Hello, everybody. Uh, that was a taste of South Sami, meaning hello, everybody. Uh, the reason why I got interested in, uh, in uh, the Sami languages, and in particular the South Sami languages, that I I'd started uh, quite early because I have had a fascination for languages, and especially the finno ugric languages. And uh, when I went to school, uh, we really had a very, you know, uh, linguistic monoculture in Norway and the same in Sweden and Finland. Uh, the Sami languages were, there were no issue in school. We didn't learn anything about it. And we didn't learn anything about Sami culture either for that matter. But I have grown up in, uh, in a, a South Sami area in, in central Norway. I could uh, see the reindeer when I went skiing in the hills outside my town. Uh, and I knew that they were owned by the Sami, but I didn't know very much about their language and about the Sami people at all. So I find that the, the, the development uh, for the past, let's say, 30, 40 years has improved that. So no, no that's not the situation anymore. The Sami languages are uh, recognized as uh, uh, official languages in Norway and so on. So, um, and I find it's very important to, to, to do this work because Multilingualism and uh, linguistic diversity is a value. And I don't like monoculture. Thank you so much. Um, we are curious to know about the intention behind the proposed Erasmus Project initiative that you have collaborated on. Can you elaborate on why you find it of importance to raise awareness about the linguistic needs of minority language communities across Europe? And also give us more insight into the ambitions of your project. And maybe you can answer this, Cor. Yes, thank you, Heidi. Um, I'm, it's my pleasure. Um, yes, from the starting point on, I, I would like to mention at least that uh, very many people saw the internet as a especially from the minority language, you saw the internet as a, a real threat to their language because of the uh, dominant situation uh, or position of languages like English and so on. But on the other hand, we have discovered that also the internet and the possible tools creating with it are also a challenge and an uh, op um, opportunity for minority languages. And it is uh, very much in line with these ideas that we um, developed uh, together with Seedlers Institute in Portugal, we developed an idea that uh, perhaps we should try and make an application and write an application about that. Because we are all, I think all minority languages are very aware that there is, there is a huge difference in sizes. We have uh, minority languages spoken by millions of people, but we also have very critical and languages under threat, as you called it. Like with a few hundred of speakers, for example, and but we can learn a lot from each other because we have also in the freezing situation we are kind of in, in in between. We have about six hundred thousand speakers, but we have a, a bit of infrastructure. We do some research. Uh, we have uh, we develop some of these these tools, for example. So and it is of course our pleasure, but also our duty, it feels like for me, uh, that we share this knowledge and that we share the uh, academic outcomes of our research, but also the, the tools we have made should be available also for others. So that is the background, a little bit of the initiation of this project, where we hope that the South Sami could also participate. By the way, the, the project has not been approved yet, but we hope that there is still a small chance that it will be approved, and we certainly will continue. Within this project, at least we we uh, we have a, a few items we want to uh, achieve, um, and we intend to uh, to support, for example, teachers and teacher training in uh, in their multilingual situation. Um, we want to empower speakers sometimes with easy uh, uh, 
uh, how do you call that um, tools which can help them to to motivate and to other groups and other speakers uh, we want to develop digital tools um, and very much and of course and last but not least raise the awareness about the multilingualism and for, in many cases uh, at least for our situation it also not only counts for awareness about the minority uh, language situation but also the uh, in, in often uh, in more and more cases migrant language situations and the migrant languages coming into the classroom in fact which um, of course are a special uh, challenge also for teachers for example so the uh, the products we intend to make within this project is uh, an e-learning platform uh, and an online module for, let's say, the deepening of the understanding of the multilingual classroom and tools and so on. And a last, uh, as third, the handbook for teachers, which will help them create, find creative solutions in their uh, situation, in their specific own uh, local situation. Um, maybe I should keep it to that. Thank you, Cor, and thank you, Sanita, and thank you, Ospion, for sharing your thoughts and experience from your work on strengthening the use of minority languages. We also appreciate a glimpse into your ongoing project initiative, and we hope you, that you will succeed in starting the collaboration. But after listening to you, we are convinced that there is a need to cooperate and collaborate at a European level for raising awareness about the importance of minority languages regardless of whether your initiative will be set into life as an Erasmus project or not. Well, let's turn our attention to the audience uh, that has been commenting and post questions during our dialogue. And I can see that from Bronwen Cowan, uh, there is a question to Thruda. How extensive is the teaching of Yoik at Noor University, is his question. Yes, uh, thank you. At the moment, we have uh, one special course teaching the, the Yoik, but uh, well, I also try to incorporate the uh, Yoik and Sami music into other musical scenes. So uh, I also teach uh, composition and then I can use uh, Joik as an as an example or as a tool for uh, explaining music. So I so I, I try to uh, put it in uh, in uh, different places. But at the moment, there's one course uh, that uh, teaches Joik uh, at the at the university. Thank you so much. And there is one question from Hanna to Maria. Can you please give us some examples of digital arenas, platforms where you are able to use your language, South Sami, effectively today? Thank you for the question. Um, so I, my experience about using South Sami uh, in the digital platform is mostly uh, when it comes to education. Um, because um, the online um, Zoom or Skype uh, courses I've had uh, in South Semi, uh, I've done for quite many years because there's so big distance between people's students and teachers. Um, so it has eased a bit to, to let us have the um, the education in South Sami language. Uh, but of course, the best way is to use both uh, physical meetings and uh, digital meetings. Um, and also during the pandemic, we had uh, an idea of having this online cafe uh, where we spoke to each other during the lockdown, just to be able to use uh, the language um, when we were all sitting in our own homes. Um, but again, I would say that um, to, to start speaking South Sami more often in the digital world is something uh, I really have to work with and to have all these platforms and people gathering up to do it. It's, uh, it's a work to do there. Thank you so much. Uh, James 
Sharples is asking Gilom, what kind of languages does the Erasmus project focus on? Is it minority languages? And how are you defining this? Well, the, the Erasmus project focus on all languages. There's no uh, distinction on, on languages. It's a learning of languages. So it depends of what kind of uh, projects the organization that bears the project has. So it's minority languages are eligible. Thank you so much. I can. I also have some comments coming in from Facebook because we are going live on Facebook, and a lot of people are applauding you for uh, through that for giving us an insight into the music tradition Yoik on Facebook. Uh, another question to Maria Kor Sanita Aspion: What counter argument do you find the most effective for replying to people who dismiss? minority language learning. And then they are quoting, but why don't you just learn Spanish? To be in, uh, to keep your individuality, I, I say I, I when my, my children, my own children asked me, and uh, when they went to the class and could read some poem in Latgalian, and uh, uh, other people, they were students, they were Russians, they were Latvians, they asked, which language do you have now? And I think this individuality, that you are different, you are unique with others, but you have some your individual, something special, this latgalian that you can read, explain, say diverse words in Latgalian. I think for the students in primary school, this, this is really effective. Any other comments? Well, uh, I think Maria actually put it very, well, very clearly in her first uh, um, input <clears throat> that I mean, language and identity is closely connected and language is life and language is culture. So it's obvious that uh, it's important that uh, a minority language can get the opportunity to live and that people can use it and so on. But it's very hard to, ar to, 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 to argue with people who don't have that at attitude. So it's a question of, of abiding to a value, as I said earlier. And if you don't have any other arguments, maybe you could tell people that learning more languages than one is good for your brain. And uh, when you're getting older than like me, it's good to learn a new language to, to uh, counter attack uh, Alzheimer. Yeah, that's true as well. Um, then there is one question to, let me see, there are several questions, but let's choose this one. Uh, to Guillaume from Francesca Sheka. To what extent is the EU or your respective country lever leveraging artificial intelligence in the protection of minority languages? Well, that's a difficult question. Uh, I would say that uh, we don't really see artificial intelligence that way. Uh, we're just looking at how it can be used in education, generally speaking. So I. I don't know what to answer to this question, I'm sorry. And, uh... That's okay. Um, there is also one coming from Rande who asks, so Sami is classified by UNESCO as a severely endangered language. How would you estimate the future prospects for South Sami? Uh, this one is towards Aspion. Well, uh, uh, I think, uh, if you, if you look at the classification system that UNESCO uses, uh, the prospects for South Sami are not very bright because there are relatively few speakers, like uh, Maria also mentioned. But uh, what is typical for the, the severely endangered languages all around the world is that they are usually spoken only by the older generation and they don't pass it on, on to their younger generations. That is not actually the fact concerning South Sami because we have a situation that it, in many families, the parents and even the grandparents, they don't speak it on a daily basis at least. So it's the young people in many cases that have taken it up. 
like Maya, she is a good example, I think. So that is a, that is very good, and I think that's the reason for having a very you know optimistic view on the future of South Sami. And also, the governmental support is important here. After you know 150 years of Norwegianization in the 1980s, the policy changed for several reasons. So now the government are very dedicated to supporting the the, the small uh, Sami languages. So I think that's good as well. Thank you. Um, one last question directed towards uh, Sanita from Nina. How could a comparative perspective on, of the European minority and regional languages, such as Frisian, Sami, etc., enhance the vitality of your spoken minority language, Latgalian? Thank you for the question. Uh, there are uh, nine factors, main factors, which are very important for language vitality. I, I will mention just two of them, uh, language documentation, for instance. And if I can compare language corpus, language corpora with another small languages, Sami or, or, or uh, Sorbian in Germany or Veru in Estonia, such a, com a com comparative perspective helps us to develop good uh, language corpus for Latgalian. We don't have such big experience. Another is a factor important with language education. As I mentioned before, when I, we are, our context, you mentioned all, Norway, Latvia, Estonia, Portugal, they are very diverse. But values, attitudes are very common. And also uh, digital tools actually very similar and they can be very common. We don't have to, to bring new ideas in every separate country. We can work together and bring to another context, particularly with digitalization and digital tools. They absolutely can be helpful for very diverse context in, in such way also uh, uh, it is enhancing language vitality when we bring it to school, to language education. This is my short question, uh, so short answer. Thank you so much. Uh, time is passing quickly and unfortunately it's time to sum up. Uh, but first of all, I would like to sincerely thank you for your contributions to today's webinar. Maria, Frude, Gilom, Kor, Sanita, and Ospian. We wish all of you success in your important work for creating awareness about the need for re revitalization of minority languages. From the mid nova European office, this webinar during the European Week of Regions and Cities has been of a first step in our long-term strategy for putting the need for revitalization of minority languages on the EU agenda. We are happy to have all of you with us, and we would like to invite you, you who are in the audience, to join us in putting awareness on minority languages and threatened languages across Europe. As mentioned in the start, our aim is to take part in a European policymaking to revitalize threatened languages and minority languages. We like to do this by close contact and hopefully collaboration with all of you the EU Commission and the EU Parliament members. So thank you, all of you, for following our event. We highly appreciate all your comments and questions directed towards today's speakers. If you would like more information about the subject discussed or you are interested in collaboration, please feel free to reach out to us. You will find our contact details on our website. Diversity is an important feature and strength of the European society. It makes our culture richer and more interesting, as you all have said. In this context, minority languages are key components for keeping our cultural identity alive. This said, we want to encourage you all to follow the European Parliament's public hearing that Guillaume mentioned on the Minority Safe Pack tomorrow, the 15th of October, from 9 till 1 o'clock, 9 in the morning till 1 o'clock. We have already shared the link here at the, the comment chat, chat uh, area. So thank you again. Until next time, we keep in touch.